Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and since we've got a vehicle here that we're working on for an AC complaint and we have to wait on parts, we're going to film a little video just to talk about how AC systems work in your vehicle. So in this video we're not going to dive into all of the details of you know how you do service and all the other stuff when you're repairing the systems, but we are going to talk about how the system works and how it creates the uh, cool air that comes out of your vents. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of the first points we're going to cover is kind of a misconception, but not really. It's more just wording. But the wording is very important because it helps you understand the system a little bit better. Now, generally, you believe that your AC system cools the car down by blowing cold air into the car. And that's not exactly the way we want to look at this. The way we want to look at this so that we can understand what the AC system is doing is that your AC system cools your vehicle by removing heat from the air blowing into your passenger compartment. Essentially, kind of says the same thing, but it makes you look at it a different way. And that's what we really want to do is kind of look at this a different way. So let's look at the uh, major components of the system and then we'll talk about what it does and how it does it. So the main components are your compressor, your condenser, your expansion valve or orifice tube, and your evaporator. Now systems are going to have either an accumulator dryer or a receiver dryer and usually depending upon whether you have an expansion valve or an orifice tube uh, it may be in line after the condenser or it may be in line after the evaporator. Uh, typically with expansion valves you see it in line after the condenser and with orifice tubes you see it in line after the evaporator. The job is pretty much the same of those two components to kind of store just a little bit of excess of refrigerant and to have a desiccant in there that removes moisture from the system because you definitely do not want moisture inside the AC system not the place for it to be. Um, and we'll talk about why when we get up here and talk about the evaporator. So, what we have to look at is the goal of this system is to be able to remove heat from the air going into your uh, passenger compartment blowing out of the vents. Now, the way it does that is really not all that different from the way a cooling system works. A cooling system it wants to take heat away from the engine, so it absorbs heat from the engine, it goes out to the radiator, and it gives that excess heat up to the air flowing over it, and then it goes back, picks up some more heat, goes back, dumps it, and it's easy because the temperature of your engine is a lot greater than the temperature of the incoming air that's going to be flowing over the radiator. Well, in this case, we want to have air coming out of the vents at like 40 degrees, 40, 45 degrees, but the only air we have to cool the condenser, which is out in front of the vehicle, uh, in front of the radiator, is going to be, you know, 70, 80, 90 degrees, maybe even 100 degrees. So you can't just pull heat out of there, or run it out there, because you won't be transferring heat away from the passenger compartment. You'd be transferring heat into the passenger compartment. So this has to add a couple extra steps and take advantage of a couple extra functions of physics basically. So what you need to understand for this is what latent heat is, what or how pressure temperature relationships work, and uh, what happens when you change pressure and change states with this refrigerant. So let's start at the compressor and work our way through the system and I think you guys are going to understand this. So the compressor brings in a uh, refrigerant in gas form that's low uh, low pressure and it's lo considered low temperature. So it compresses that gas until it is a high temperature, high pressure gas leaving the compressor and that's where it goes to the condenser. Now that the compressor has made the pressure a lot higher, the temperature goes up with it because whenever you increase pressure you also increase temperature. So now that we have the higher pressure, we have the higher temperature, and we've upped this to a temperature that's high enough that it can lose heat 
to the incoming air even when it's 90 degrees or 9,500 degrees. So now we've been able to compress this, bring it up to a temperature that is capable of losing heat to the incoming air. And when it loses that heat to the air, it condenses, hence the name condenser, and it changes state and it changes into a liquid. It's still a high temperature and it's still a high pressure, but now it's a liquid. It is slightly lower temperature than it left the compressor at, but we're just going to call it high temperature because it is still on the high side. It is still a high temperature. So now we've taken it at a high pressure and we've condensed it because we pulled heat out of it down to a liquid and the liquid leaves that and it goes through your expansion valve or your orifice tube. Both of them serve the same function basically. They allow the high side to bleed off into the low side. Um, it's a, on the orifice tube, it's basically just a very small metered hole that lets it bleed off into the low side and the expansion valve will uh, regulate the flow based on the evaporator temperature. It's got a little sensing bulb that goes up by the evaporator and it will change the flow of refrigerant based on how cold the uh, evaporator is. So both of them change it from the high side down back to the low pressure side, but they do it a little bit differently. And like I said, those are typically what are your indicators of whether you'll have an accumulator dryer or a receiver dryer. And uh, that's, we'll get into that more in the in-depth video, but just understand that those are what change the pressure from high pressure back to low pressure. So now we have low pressure, low temperature, liquid refrigerant leaving the expansion valve and going expansion valve or orifice tube and going into the evaporator and much like the condenser condenses the evaporate evaporator evaporates the liquid as it comes into the evaporator is going to remove heat from the air going over it because it is much colder now because it's come down to a low temperature uh, with the low pressure that it's cold enough that it can pull heat away from that air and It's a pretty big bug. Anyway, it can pull uh, heat away from this air and start to give us that 40 degree air that we want to to get from this so as it pulls heat away from there it's adding heat to the refrigerant, so the refrigerant begins to boil, and it boils back to a gas. But it's still on the low side, so it's still a low pressure. And you'll see, you know, 30, 35, maybe 40 PSI, uh, somewhere in that range on the low side. Sometimes they'll creep down to like 25 or so, but that's pretty low for the low side. So now that it's it boiled off uh, into a gas, it leaves the evaporator goes back to the compressor and it starts the cycle all over again. So the things to, to think about here is we are pulling the heat out from the air with the refrigerant in its low pressure state because at that low pressure the refrigerant is cold enough to be able to pull the heat out of the air. But at that state or in that pressure it can't it can't lose that heat to 70 or 90 degree, 80 degree air. So we take the compressor and we compress it. So now it's got that heat charge that it picked up. We compress it and it's hot enough now under you know pressure that it can lose that heat charge and go back, come to the low side again, go pick up more heat and just repeat the cycle over and over. Now, as I said, some of the things this hinges on Obviously, uh, pressure temperature relationships, we talked about how that works with, with an increase in pressure is an increase in temperature, with a decrease in pressure is a decrease in temperature, and both of those come into play here. The, and kind of, I didn't really walk through it, but you have two items in here that change pressure and split high low side, which is the compressor and the orifice tube or expansion valve, and you have two items that change state. This changes from a liquid to a gas, and this changes from a gas to a liquid. So those are some of the key points. The other one is latent heat. Latent heat is sometimes hard for people to understand or visualize. Well, because you really can't visualize it. But when you have a substance change state from 
a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas or a gas to a liquid and uh, the liquid to gas and gas to liquid are what we, we are dealing with here. There is a heat transfer in excess of the temperature represented by heat transfer. Uh, this sounds really weird. Let me try to explain it better so maybe you'll understand. There's heat transfer with no temperature change just because of the state change. So if you have this refrigerant at a liquid in the liquid state, when it changes state, it will, it will pull temperature out of the air and it will pull it up right up to the point that it changes state. It was still adding temperature to that refrigerant. The temperature of the refrigerant comes up until it gets to the point that it's going to change state. Now the energy required for it to change state will still draw heat out of the air, but it will not add temperature to the refrigerant until it's changed state. Once it's changed state, it can still change in temperature, but it requires more heat than it shows in the temperature change to change state. And the exact opposite is true here on the condenser. When it comes in as a high pressure gas to uh, condense to a liquid, it takes more heat as you lose heat. It gives more of that heat away than is represented, sorry, is represented by the temperature change of the refrigerant. Now, it will absorb that excess heat or it'll lose that excess heat and it will change state and then it can continue to change temperature after that. But there is more energy in the state change than just jumping one more degree once you change states. Uh, and that's really one of the more powerful reasons that these AC systems work because without having to change temperature a lot more, we're able to absorb and then get rid of more heat than you can just represented by the temperature change. Um, I hope that isn't too confusing. Uh, it's actually, for as complicated as it, as it seems, it's pretty simple. Um, but that's, that's the basics of your AC system. That's, that's how it works. You know what happened? I got all the way done with this and I was all the way inside editing this video and I realized, I told you guys I was going to talk about why you don't want moisture in the system and I never did. So let's jump back up to the evaporator. That's one of the biggest places it can cause a problem. Because we cool our evaporator down to nearly 30 degrees uh, quite often, any moisture that's in the system when it's inside the evap when the refrigerant's inside the evaporator, uh, carrying moisture in there could freeze. Now, as you may or may not know, water, when it freezes into ice, expands. Now, as it expands, I think it's like 8%, it can very easily break things like soda cans, if you put them in the freezer, uh, even glass, it can break if they're frozen and the pressure, you know, gets too high. Uh, that's one of the reasons is you can rupture p portions of the evaporator if there's any moisture in there because it can freeze. Uh, and the other reason is just plain it causes corrosion on the inside of the system all over on the inside of the compressor, um, on the inside of the condenser, the evaporator, through the expansion valve, whatever. Um, you just don't want moisture in the system because moisture will cause corrosion. So those are your two big reasons. One, just in general, you don't want moisture in a lot of places because you don't want corrosion there. And you definitely don't want moisture when it gets up to the evaporator and it gets cold enough to freeze water. So now let's carry on with the video. Like I said, the same goal as your regular cooling system, pull heat away from the engine, dump it to the incoming air. Only problem is we want cold air 40 degree air and we've only got you know 80 90 degree air to dump it to so we had to find a way to uh, be able to absorb heat from the air going in and dump it to a higher temperature and this is what we came up with um, there have been different refrigerants in the past well uh, r12 is one of the you know the refrigerant known uh, before r134a which is the current refrigerant used in pretty much every vehicle um, there's talk of changing in the future. Uh, I think some countries in you know, Europe have changed to a different refrigerant and we'll see how that stuff plays out. But in essence, the principles are all going to be the same. It's going to work on the same basic principles. Pressure temperature relationships, uh, pressure changes, heat uh, state changes, and latent heat. 
those are what make the AC system work. And all of that has to play together very specific, in very specific ways to get that cold air to come out of your vents. Now, uh, we had a delay in parts on the video that, um, for the video that we're shooting on this AC repair. So it may be a delay of a day or two after this video comes out before that one comes out. But when it comes out, I will link it in the description and I will put a, uh, a little thing over here or somewhere for you to click on to go see that video. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing here on the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.